If you want to use Ableton Live on stage as a keys player, you need to make sure your setup is set up so that you can press a key, play a sound, smoothly transition to the next sound without skipping a beat. Or even better yet, press play in Ableton Live and let Ableton trigger your sounds for you. Hey, I'm Will Doggett, Ableton Live Certified Trainer, founder of From Studio to Stage. Today I'm going to show you how you can set Ableton Live up so that your keys patches will change automatically or you can smoothly switch at any time from any sound to another one. So let's get started. Welcome to From Studio to Stage where every Friday we post a brand new tutorial showing you how to use Ableton Live on stage. Today's tutorial is brought to you by Oyen Digital. If you use your computer to make music, you need a high performance rock solid hard drive. And that's what Oyen Digital does. Their Mobius line of hard drives are excellent solutions for musicians looking for a desktop storage solution to safely store and back up their files. With capacities from 6 terabytes all the way up to 24 terabytes, the ability to use SSD and HDD drives, and configurable RAID options, Mobius drives are the perfect place to safely store your work. To get 15% off any Mobius hard drive, head to oyendigital.com and use the code MOBIUS15. That's O-Y-E-N digital.com and use the code MOBIUS15. Thanks to Oyen Digital for your support of From Studio to Stage. So the way magic can happen with keys in Ableton Live is using what's called an instrument rack. Within the instrument rack is something called chain selector, and this is how everything I showed in the intro can happen. So let me show you how to set this up. It's super easy to do. I'm going to go over to my browser to the instrument section and drag in a instrument rack. Now I want to duplicate what I did before. What I did before is up here in pink, and I'm going to create a new one down below. So I'm going to rename this keys. And in the instrument rack, I have three sections here. I have the macro controls where I can map different settings to macros. I have the chain list where I can see all the different chains that are within one instrument rack. And then I have the device viewer where I can view the devices that are part of the chain. For this tutorial, we're just gonna deal with chains. So I have some presets that I, uh, I wanna load in and use for this. So I'm gonna go here to my presets folder and I'm gonna drag in a pad sound, a bass sound, and then a lead piano sound. So let's start with our bass sound. I'm gonna grab this sub bass and all I'm gonna do is drag it into the chain list. Now you want to make sure you drag it into the chain list and not replace the instrument rack. So now let's grab our pad in and again I'm gonna drop it right here where it says drop an instrument or sample here. It's gonna load our pad and then finally let's take our lead sound. So this is called dream leads and I'm gonna drop that in. So now I have one instrument rack with three different sounds. Now if I play right now it's got pad, bass, and leads all layered together. Uh, now, instrument racks are great and using chains are great if you wanna layer sounds, but in this case, we don't. We want three separate sounds, basically three separate presets. Here's how we do it. I'm gonna click the chain button that's gonna show all the different chains as a part of instrument rack. And I'm gonna put each of these in their separate chain. So I'm gonna move this first one uh, from zero to one. Let's move this to two and this to three. Now the reason I leave zero uh, with nothing attached to it or assigned to it is I kind of use that as a mute group. So if I play now, you'll hear no sounds because the chain select ruler is set to zero. If I move this to one, you're gonna hear the sub bass. Okay, two, you're gonna hear our pad. And then finally three, you're gonna hear our lead sound. So now, that's great, but it's not great to be fiddling with your computer while you're playing live. So how do we make it so that when I press one, I get sound one, two, get sound two, three, get sound three. So I'm gonna go over to session view. And again, super simple to do. I'm gonna double click in that MIDI track to create a MIDI clip and I'm gonna rename it one. I'm gonna do the same thing for two and the same thing for three. Now, a couple settings I wanna change on this. I'm gonna select all of these clips that I just created and I wanna make sure the L here, the launch box, is open and live. And under quantization, I wanna change from global to none. And what that means is whenever I trigger this clip, it's gonna trigger immediately. It's not gonna to wait to the, the downbeat of the next bar. Uh, and that's what we want in this situation. Now, the next thing I wanna do is go back to my clip and because I was using the chain selector last, that's automatically pulled up, which is one of my favorite things about live. But if not, I can go to the device chooser here and choose instrument rack. And then in the list of all the different parameters in the, um, uh, the control chooser that I can choose, I wanna choose chain selector to automate. So we'll take chain selector here and I wanna make sure preset one 
is set to one. So I'm just gonna drag down to one. Two, same exact deal. I'm gonna create a breakpoint and just drag to two. And three, I'm gonna create a breakpoint just so it stays right at three. Now to make it to where I can trigger these and have control over them, I need to key map them. So I'm gonna go into Command K and map my key. So let's press one, and I'm gonna press one on my keyboard. Two, press two on my computer keyboard. Three, press three on my computer keyboard. So this is super simple. I can play a lead line like this, sustain this note out, trigger the bass sound, and then switch right over to bass. And you'll notice it smoothly transitions from one preset to the next. And because I use global quantization set to none, as soon as I trigger two, it plays that clip, which is great. Now, what if we want live to automatically play those presets for us? This is my favorite part of this. So I'm gonna press tab. And in a range of view, I wanna lay out these clips so that at different parts of my song, uh, the, those clips trigger. So you can see I did the same thing in the first example. So let me delete these. And what I'm gonna do is grab my clips from session view. So I can copy this. Let's go to track two and we can paste it. And that's gonna paste that exact chain selector. Uh, and for two, let's grab two. We can copy that. And three, we can copy this guy. So now we have these sounds. And again, if I want to, at the end, add one after three, I can click on this guy, hold Alt Option, let's have two again, and let's go back to one. So now, as I press play, I'm not gonna play for a second, but I wanna open the chain selector so you can see it. As I press play, you'll see it toggles from one to two, then to three, again, automatically happening all the way back to one, two, and then back to one again. So what's cool about this is imagine creating your presets, dropping them into chains, uh, into their separate track, and then dragging clips in so that at specific parts of the song, you're gonna automatically get the exact sound that you want. The beauty of this is you do it one time and then the work is done and you never have to do it again. So if you're interested in learning more about how to use Ableton Live on stage for keys, you're gonna wanna head to fromstudiostage.com and start your free seven day trial. While you're there, you're gonna get access to every single course that we have, get access to the community of like-minded performers that are using Ableton Live on stage. And then finally, you're gonna get access to the monthly webinar that's exclusive just for subscribers. It's a great way to learn Ableton Live in a community of people focused on the same thing. We'd love to see you there. So thanks so much for watching this tutorial and hope to see you next time. Take care.